Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about yet another mysterious star in the Andromeda galaxy that seems to be exploding way too much. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So the Andromeda galaxy is relatively far from us, it's about two and a half million light years away from the uh, Milky Way. As a matter of fact, this is the Andromeda, and if I were to try to point at where the Milky Way is, it's sort of right there and it's actually barely visible, it's kind of far away. But um, even though it's so far away from us, we can still see uh, quite a lot of things happening here, specifically when it comes to large explosions. And so, um, very recently, only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video, a new paper was published that actually describes a very unusual event happening um, around the star known as M31N 2008-12A. The event that I'm talking about is known as NOAA, and I'm going to explain to you in a second what this means. But what's so unusual about this particular event is that it seems to be happening every single year. And that's way, way more frequent than we usually see these happening. So anyway, first of all, what's a NOAA? Well, it's actually a little bit different or very different from a supernova. What you're about to see is known as type 1a supernova. This is when a star similar to what our sun is going to become, a white dwarf, um, reaches a mass known as Chandrasekhar limit. You can actually check out this concept in the video that should be popping up somewhere above, above my head. Um, and once this limit is reached, the star basically explodes. Usually it kind of leaves very, very tiny fragment of itself in the middle, but sometimes it explodes completely. It creates a lot of energy and it's very, very powerful. And we normally use these uh, supernova as a kind of a standard candle of measurement, basically because they always kind of explode with the same luminosity and the same strength. We can use this to um, measure distances in space once these supernova are detected. And so that's how a lot of distances in space are measured. But these events are pretty rare. As a matter of fact, uh, the last one in our own galaxy is like centuries ago. So it would be very unusual to find one nearby. On the other hand, there is another event known as NOVA, and that's actually um, a little bit different. So NOVA occurs um, also around the white dwarf, but for different reasons. For a NOVA to occur, a white dwarf, in this, in this case it's actually Sirius B, the closest white dwarf to our solar system, it's only like six light years away from us, is orbiting its partner Sirius A. And as you can see, because it's orbiting so close to it, it starts eating up some of its mass because of the tidal effects. Uh, this object is super, super dense, it's very small, but they're about the same mass. And its partner star is relatively similar to our sun, it's much uh, less dense. And this density basically causes the larger star to lose its mass and to slowly deposit it um, in a kind of a ring, accretion disk basically, around the white dwarf. So we might not see this here, I might actually kind of cheat a little bit and just add one manually. Uh, so there is that little accretion disk that is kind of difficult to see, but it's basically there. And eventually this disk grows larger and larger and larger and larger, and at some point um, reaches a critical mass which is very similar to what happens in nuclear reactors if basically things go wrong. When a nuclear mass is reached, this whole thing here explodes in a very large nuclear explosion. Not a type of an explosion that supernova has, but basically a, a very similar to an explosion that you'd expect from a nuclear bomb. And these explosions are extremely bright and are visible from really, really far away. Now, when a star goes nova, it normally um, repeats the process every decade or so. Sometimes every 20 years, sometimes every 10 years. It really depends on the star. But um, for this particular star that we discovered um, very recently, this process seems to happen every single year. It basically creates these explosions much more frequently, like 10 times more frequently than we expect. And this is where the mystery lies, because we're not sure why it's doing that. On top of that, because it explodes so often, it created this very, very large structure that's essentially 400 light years across. This is 
what the scientists refer to as a super remnant and it's essentially just all of this material that was exploded in these large explosions for the past, um, I guess, hundreds of years, as soon as the stars started going nova. And because it happens every year, more and more mass is added and the structure keeps growing larger and larger. But there might be one explanation that the scientists think they have for this. The uh, explanation is that it might be actually a kind of a natural progression of a white dwarf that has a partner. And um, what's happening here is that it's actually reaching its mass limit, known as Chandrasekhar limit. And as it's sort of reaching its limit, it starts throwing off more and more of these nova. It basically starts exploding a little bit more until it finally reaches the limit. And then when that happens, the entire star will basically explode and go type 1a supernova. And this will be extremely bright and quite visible uh, from our planet Earth. Now, we don't think it's going to happen anytime soon though. And so unfortunately, we're not going to be actually seeing this in the next few years. But the current estimate is that this might happen within the next 40,000 years. And uh, if this is actually what's happening here, it means that we now have officially kind of understood the uh, evolution of white dwarf binaries a little bit better. Because we've seen Nova before and we've seen type 1a supernova, but we didn't really know what happens in between. But this particular study uh, seems to indicate that these Nova that we're seeing will increase in frequency even more with time. And at some point, um, it's very likely that the star will simply reach its limit and will essentially uh, do this. This is a simulation that you can find in Universe Sandbox where you're shown how type 1a supernova occurs when the star reaches its Chandrasekhar limit. And so honestly, this is actually a pretty exciting discovery coming from Andromeda, specifically because when these uh, supernova happen, it allows us to uh, determine the actual distance much more accurately, and the effects of the supernova will actually produce some really interesting things as well. Now, at the same time though, we don't expect it to happen anytime soon, and if it does happen in 40,000 years, well, hopefully there are still astronomers around to actually observe it. And for all we know, maybe just maybe uh, by then we might even find a way to actually go there. That would be pretty cool, right? Anyway, on that note, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. It's an interesting discovery and a very cool explanation to a phenomenon that we kind of understand, but not super well just yet. And hopefully in the next few years, we'll actually have some confirmations of whether this is correct or maybe not so correct. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And thank you so much to all of you who have supported me on Patreon for months or years. It really helps me a lot. And if you'd actually like to become a Patreon uh, and support this channel, the link for it is in the description below and should be popping up somewhere on the screen any second now. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.